percent. Now that is in Florida. You might actually find this surprising, but 32 other states also have some form of stand your ground type of law. And nationally, since 2005, justifiable homicides, the type that comes from these laws, have risen about 50 percent. Five zero. So this is not just a Florida issue that we're talking about here. This is a national issue that is getting more and more attention now because of the Zimmerman case. Let's discuss it with our legal panel this morning. We have the two fine gentlemen joining us, attorneys Jeff Gold and Brian Kabatek. We appreciate you both joining us this morning, and we're going to put you to work today. We're going to have you on a little later as well to talk Michael Jackson, but let's talk about this stand your ground. Brian, let's start with you. States obviously must think that there must, or at least the lawmakers there, must think there must be a need for these laws, or there wouldn't, why would so many of them have this law? Well, good morning, Michaela. You know, you have to go back and look at the defense of self-defense, which is as old as this country itself. It, in fact, it's older. It goes back to the common law. And that defense is what we call an imperfect defense, meaning that there isn't always an opportunity to use that defense if there was an opportunity to walk away from a situation. What these 38 states have done is they've taken that important element away of the defense. They've removed that requirement that you should walk away if there's an opportunity to walk away. So states have felt for some reason that we need that element in it so we don't even question whether or not the defendant could have walked away from a dangerous situation. So in Stand Your Ground, we look only at the moment of the of the event and that's what got into the jury instruction in the Zimmerman case that's undoubtedly the main reason why he walked and that's what we see in all these other states that have exactly this same kind of defense so essentially for those that don't know the difference between standing ground and self-defense is the, the the notion of of walking away of retreating correct that's right it's an important so, distinction to understand. It, it, it really is. Okay, so let's talk about the fact that Eric Holder, very clear that he thought the law should be thrown out. But this is a state's issue. Is there anything the federal attorney general can do about this, Brian? No. It's states' rights. Oh. States have the right to set their own laws. They have the right to set the grounds for their laws. And several people have indicated, you know, they're unhappy with the Zimmerman trial. They're unhappy with the result. I understand that. Change the law in the state. That's what has to happen in order to resolve this particular problem. Jeff, let's get you in on the conversation. What is your thought? Well, first of all, there are two philosophies. You know, those that support stand your ground are not just saying that they want to stand their ground for honor, but they're saying that it discourages criminals. It discourages people attacking others because they may have a concealed weapon and be able to use it. Personally, I do think it increases the amount of deaths. So overall, the duty of, to retreat, which is where most of the states had been, is a good thing because it, it honors life over mere uh, machismo. Uh, but there still is a, you know, a public policy about Stand Your Ground that says, listen, we are trying to discourage crime. Is there any correlation between the states that have Stand Your Ground laws and their status as pro-gun rights states? Well, there's statistics on both sides, Michaela, and the NRA, which supported this very heavily, uh, will cite you statistics that uh, violent crime is down in Florida. So while you might cite statistics that people get off, well, they get off because they use the law as it was properly written. But on the other hand, the NRA says, listen, violent crime is down. That's our object. Brian and Jeff, Jeff Gold, Brian Kabatek, we're going to have you back here in a few minutes at the bottom of the show to talk more, uh, some more legal matters with us. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you in a moment.